Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, it's actually, I'm going to just give you a little bit of an overview about new instruments or instruments that address some of the safety issues that we just heard about. I do, I have never worked for any company, I have no disclosures, but I'm going to say that any company named in this talk does not imply that I have anything to do with what they do or any opinion that I want to present that they are better than another company or their product is any better than anything else. How did I do this? Well, basically, I spoke with engineers, colleagues, and uh, internet searchers, and I'm, I'm looking for something, a device that does, for, from a fuse perspective, improve surgeon safety and ability. We've just seen that um, there's a lot of tri tricky situations where these devices can cause harm, and that's due to the fact that you know, we're basically using a 100-year-old technique developed by William Bowie and Michael Irby independently. And radiofrequency current is great because you don't kill the patient and you don't kill the surgeon. But on the other hand, it broadcasts. And now we're not using small little pieces of metal in open surgery. We're using antennas to operate on. So that's, that opens up a whole Pandora's box of stray energy burns, as we just saw, well explained by Dr. Kinger. The first thing I want to say, there are now more than one type of electrosurgical generators. The ones we all are most familiar with are the high uh, constant power or constant wattage, wattage uh, generators. There are problems associated with those, but there's a whole new generation of electrosurgical units that work on constant voltage. And we heard voltage can be bad. So if you have an electrosurgical unit that holds the voltage constant, you can work at a predetermined low voltage level and it will never change, which can be of advantage. There's a company out there that actually almost put the nail in the coffin of capacitive coupling and insulation failure. And simply what they did, they used the principle of a TV cable, which if it wasn't shielded and you turn on the mixer in the kitchen, your TV screen looks like a, um, a shower of electrons. And that's because there's interference from the mixer, from the electrical motor, radio in interference with the signal of the TV that's going through a single cable. And to prevent that, it's shielded with another layer of metal. And that's exactly what they did for surgical instruments. And they actively monitor that. And if, as you can see here, this was presented at Sages in a, in a um, poster. And um, the authors checked both insulation power failure and capacitive coupled failure in instruments with or without the shielding. And when you look at the results for the shielded instruments, basically you eliminate those energies, those stray energies. There's now a, a whole slew of instruments that work on very low voltage. So the, the companies have understood that the voltage is a problem and high voltage can cause a lot of stray energy. So they came out with these pencils that work on very short duty cycle and very low voltage. So you have very minimal thermal damage and you have less smoke and it's very well advertised. Problem is, there aren't, there aren't in the laparoscopic market yet and the reason is the energies in these instruments is very low. So it's mainly used in ENT and plastic surgery open surgeries. This is an example of um, an Ethicon device, the Megadyne device, the same concept as the Medtronic device that I showed you before. Here the, the metal is insulated in addition to prevent the sticking. So they're very nice when you do small little things like lymph node dissections uh, on, an, on a mastectomy, for example, or something in the ENT uh, where you don't want to have sparks because that can cause fires in the trachea and so forth. These I want to just briefly mention. The robotics 
situation in the operating room is, is a very dangerous one because you have so much metal in the patient. And the company, companies, but mainly one company, is very aware of that. But they haven't really found a solution yet. What they did with their newest device, which is sort of a dissector sealer, not really a sealer, but a dissector, they, they put a rubber glove around the tip of the instrument, which prevents insulation problems and direct coupling, but it doesn't stop the capacitive coupling problems. And then I wanted to mention that there's a company out there that are very, very small devices, so you need very little energy. And this device is used in pediatric surgery, and it's basically two, three millimeter in size. It works very quickly, but you can only work on very small tissues. I want to go a little bit in more detail into this company, Irby, which is probably the longest standing company for electrosurgical instruments in the world. They, they started in the 19th century, and they're still run by the same family. And most of you that do gastrointestinal endoscopic work probably know this company because almost all gastrointestinal endoscopists use this uh, um, device. The nice thing about this is it's a constant voltage device. So you set, when you set the power, not like, unlike Covidian or Medtronic, where you set the power and it's 30 watts, and the machine will pro deliver 30 watts no matter what the impedance is. In other words, it goes up to eight, 9,000 volts to overcome that impedance to deliver 30 watts. This machine will never do that. It will stop at whatever voltage you set it. So if you set it at 1,000 volts, it will never go over 1,000 volts. The other advantage is, just like your new car that you have now that has 15 different settings for you know, uh, your, your steering and your suspension and, and whatnot, they have a ton of pre-programmed algorithm, which can be very helpful. Because if you learn how to use these algorithm correctly, which might take you a time, you, will, you can choose actually the safest algorithm for whatever task you're at hand. And you don't have a, one hammer to put a nail in. And that can be of advantage. But it's complicated. So I don't drive a complicated car. I'm the, old, the youngest car I drive is 2002 because I can't handle all this extra stuff. But for the young guys around here, this might be your solution. And I'm going to show you a quick video. It really shows that this one particular program they have, it's called Precise SAC. It's, it adapts the duty cycle, and you can see the the, when you look at the um, oscilloscope, you can see that it adapts the, you, uh, the duty cycle according to the impedance of the tissue. Here's another example. Look at, the, look at both the effect on the tissue and the duty cycle. So when it's low impedance, the duty cycle is pretty wide, and when it's high impedance, uh, it, it narrows down. And that that intelligence that's built into the device allows the surgeons to not bother thinking too much about what this electricity energy is going to do. And um, to finish my talk, this has nothing to do with electricity, but it's relevant to fuse safety. We talk about it, how uh, easy it is to, to create a burn with the light cord. And I found this device, and I thought it was pretty nifty. There's probably other devices like that, but it's basically automatically, immediately, when you unhook the cord, it snaps right onto it so that you don't have to worry where that cord lands on the drapes. Small little plastic thing, not very expensive, and kind of smartly done. So in summary, my observations, I would say the, the best of show, really the coaxial shield concept at the end effector by the company incision is a very, very good one. Not many people use it because it's not very widely uh, um, known. It's a small company. But I think if that concept gets applied to many, many devices, it would eliminate some of the really dangerous stray effects. And the voltage control generator. 
In Europe, most people use them. In America, most people use the watt control, power control. But when you think about the concept, you might want to take a look. In general, I didn't, I didn't find the one thing that saves us from all these problems. So it's more an evolution than a revolution, okay? And much like a new car, many pre-programmed settings, but no autopilot yet. So with that, I thank you for listening.